Hey guys, John here. Many of you have been mentioning in the comments that you would like to see the finishing part 3 of my uh, illegal border crossing attempt, but unfortunately I don't have enough time to create the entire video yet because I'm still very busy with my house flipping project. So what I've decided is to give you at least something to give you at least part of that story. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna fast forward to that day when I uh, flew over to Chihuahua, Mexico from uh, Mexico City on May 8th. I flew to Chihuahua to uh, actually conduct my final preparations for my uh, border crossing. I spent there three nights from May 8th to May 11th and in the morning of May 11th I actually headed towards the border. So May 9th and May 10th which is exactly two years ago so this is actually even a nice coincidence that it's actually exactly two year anniversary of my uh, unsuccessful attempt to return back to America. On these two days, May 9th and May 10th, I needed to prepare everything. Before I start covering the story, I wanted to mention that these videos are not intended to be manual on how to cross the border. These videos are not about uh, how to break the laws and stuff. These videos are only intended to cover my personal journey, how I was trying to get back to the United States where I lived for over 18 years illegally, working, doing business. And then uh, I traveled back to uh, my home country, Czech Republic, which is now called Czechia. And and I wanted to apply for E2 investors visa so I could uh, live and uh, continue my business in America legally. Unfortunately, I received a 10 year bar and uh, I wasn't able to return back to America legally. So first I tried to get there from Canada, but uh, unfortunately I wasn't allowed to enter Canada and I was sent back to London where I was staying at that time. So I was forced to uh, change my plans and try to plan a trip through Mexico. I wanted to have it, you know, as safe as possible. So I didn't want to cross the border somewhere end of the world. There is no civilization. There is just desert or a wall or uh, cartels. I definitely wanted to survive this journey. So that's uh, why I planned to try to sneak in during that party on the border, which is called La Fiesta Protesta, the voices from both sides. This party was held there yearly and I done some research on it. So let me go ahead and start uh, covering that story for you right now. I was able to gather most of the authentic media that I recorded during that time on my GoPro drone and my iPhone. So while I was in Chihuahua, I needed to take care of a few things. One, I needed to purchase the mountain bike. I needed to uh, test it. I needed to ride it somewhere to get used to it. I looked up a bicycle store online prior my trip and I checked the opening hours and my plan was to actually purchase the bike the same day I arrived in Chihuahua. Second, I needed to offload my computer and my iPhones. I needed to upload all my media, my videos, my pictures also from my GoPros and from uh, my drone up to the iCloud so I don't have any trace on me in case I get searched at the border that I came from Mexico or from Europe so I needed to wipe out all my devices and then I also wanted to have my suitcase with my clothes shipped to FedEx location in Albuquerque. I had my leather jacket, my leather shoes with me and obviously I couldn't take those with me to the border. I just wanted to have my, my backpack with me with all my electronics, my gadgets and a pair of spare socks, briefs, shorts and a t-shirt all lightweight, no extra weight. All right, talking about the luggage. So right upon arrival at Chihuahua, things started getting a little funny. 
somehow I passed the baggage claim. I just followed the crowd and suddenly I was in the lobby. As soon as I passed the exit door, I realized I, I must have passed the uh, baggage claim and I wanted to turn around and go back in, but the security guards just wouldn't let me in. Maybe you've been wondering why I've been standing there by the door. So this is why I've been constantly trying to convince them, you know, politely. I've been asking for if I could go get my luggage, but they wouldn't let me in. They wouldn't call anyone on the radio. They basically made me stay there for a good 30 minutes before all the passengers got their luggage and until everyone was gone, everyone else was gone, they finally called someone on the radio and went to go get my suitcase. And I was getting really frustrated because I was running out of time for that bike shop. The bike shop was gonna close in 30 minutes and I realized I wasn't gonna be able to purchase the bike that day. All right, so they finally got my suitcase and I was able to head out the airport. Now, because I did not have any data service on my cell phone, I've been using Wi-Fi hotspots for ordering Uber, getting directions or translations. So I got me an Uber to my hotel. Because in just a few days I needed a ride up north to the border, I knew that I need to start searching for a ride right from the start. So I initiated a conversation with the Uber driver and I asked him if he was available on May 11th in the morning to take me up north to the border but he didn't speak much English and he said that his son actually speaks better English so he gave me his email and I emailed him later on and they were not able to take me up there so anytime in the future when I got an Uber ride around Chihuahua every time I asked the driver if he would be available but none of the drivers were interested so in the end I only relied on you know setting up the ride through the Uber app and hoping that there will be someone who can drive me up there so during those few following days I started suspecting that this might be a little challenging to first find someone who would be willing to drive four hours up north away from the city and second who would be willing to load my mountain bike in the trunk. I knew this was uh, gonna be a challenge and I had my fingers crossed that it's gonna work out. I had a hotel booked near downtown Chihuahua or should I say rather hostel than hotel. It was a budget place. Uh, I wasn't planning on spending too much money on accommodation so I got a cheap uh, hostel place. The room had no windows but it should do good for these few days. Good enough for me to get ready for the border crossing. <laughs> A je to můj první pokoj za celé moje putování, kde nemám absolutně žádný výhled. Tady není vole v okno. Tady je akorát tohle. Tohle je to okno. A je to okno do chodby, vole. A tady prostě není žádný okno, vole. <laughs> So I settled down at the hotel, I unpacked, I hooked up my computer to the Wi-Fi to start uploading all the files and I went straight out to stroll around the city. I was curious what Chihuahua is like, what it feels like in person. I've seen some videos and pictures prior to my trip, but I wanted to see it in person. So I walked to downtown and I must tell you, Chihuahua is pretty nice city, nice and warm nice people happy people there's this uh, pedestrian only zone with uh, shops name brand shops there's even Starbucks McDonald's tons of restaurants tons of people everywhere mostly Hispanics Mexicans uh, you, you will barely see a foreigner because Chihuahua is not really like a tourist destination you will see very few foreigners browsing the city Muerte. 
well, this guy seemed a little unsatisfied. Anyway, I like Chihuahua. If it was a different time, different circumstances, maybe I would even consider living here. Even the damn roads are in better shape than what they are where I'm at right now in Czechia. Of course, after a whole day on my feet, I was uh, getting thirsty and hungry, so I needed to replenish and I tried some of the street food. Then I sat at one of the restaurants and guess what? They had an NHL game on the TV. So I was like, yeah, this is the spot where I'm gonna chill for the rest of the evening. So I sat down and I ordered some tortillas y corona cerveza. And here is actually when I wanna point out the nice people of Chihuahua. Not all the Mexicans are bad guys, bad people, drug dealers, killers, rapists, and whatever. But here were really some nice people in Chihuahua. I'll give you an example. There was a tourist couple sitting at one of the tables and they had a camera on top of that table. And after they finished their meal, they paid and they left and they forgot the camera on that table. And this guy sitting at the next table with his girlfriend noticed the camera. He grabbed the camera and he chased after the tourist and he gave them the camera. And of course, losing a camera hurts not because of the device, but because of the memories you have on it. You would expect the camera to get stolen, but instead, what a good Samaritan Mexican. I believe that Chihuahua is a really nice city to be in. All right, so that wraps up my first day in Chihuahua and now it's time to get some rest, to get some sleep because next couple of days is gonna be hectic. All right, today is May 9th. I just started my final preparations for crossing the border from Mexico to United States. I just wanna remember, uh, remember this moment. So what I wanna show right now is what I'm taking with me and what I'm shipping via uh, FedEx. All right, so what I'm keeping is all the essentials I need for the trip. iPhone holder, helmet, gloves, sunglasses, my Ray-Bans, my Hugo Boss, spare glasses for biking glasses, spare battery is gonna come in, go in the pouch, car charger for the iPhones and GoPro batteries, GoPro batteries, my other iPhone for the GoPro controller, card reader, one American uh, power supply. Uh, so this is all the stuff that I'm shipping. Sunscreen, the drone, all packed up. I got some American quarters and most important thing, the keys to my storage unit in Fayetteville. Mouse, Apple. I'm gonna hide this passport somewhere in the backpack so i'm keeping some pesos for now for just uh, expenses here in chihuahua and i also got some dollars i got 27 dollars for the biking i have the biking pants uh, some socks some tank tops and some shorts and i'm keeping only one t-shirt the vitamins one pair of spare socks and one pair of uh, briefs, a spare tank tops too, in case I, I sweat heavily, and spare uh, Under Armour shorts. These are the only clothes I'm gonna pack. Now for the hygiene, I only keep the leftover of my toothpaste for the next three days and then I'm gonna throw it away. And of course my computer and the charger. This is all I'm taking with me. So this is basically it. I'm pretty much ready. So right now I'm heading out to FedEx to see uh, if the suitcase can actually be shipped to a FedEx location in Albuquerque where I'm gonna pick it up in just a few days. And then I'm gonna go purchase a, a mountain bike and I should be all set today. And tomorrow I'm gonna do some drone flights over Chihuahua and take some more pictures and, and ride the bike. I'm gonna ride the bike today as well. Test it out, get used to it. Now all I need is just a little bit of a little bit of luck so I don't get caught and I'll be able to get past the checkpoint to Alpine, Texas and then further up north to New Mexico to Albuquerque where I need to uh, renew my driver's license, purchase a truck and drive 
from New Mexico back to North Carolina. So all of this needs to needs to pan out in order to purchase that house. I've been trying to negotiate in the past uh, months through my agent buddy who's uh, working on it right now. Uh, the thing is the house can't be sold as a short sale anymore so I will be paying more than $90,000 for it which is kind of killing my budget. I will have to pay the entire amount that they owe to the bank which is $123,000 so I'm gonna have to pay that. I'm gonna have to cut some corners on the renovation so hopefully I'm gonna close on that house soon so i can start working on it as early as i can you know after i arrive back in fayetteville and, and of course uh, I, I want to finally see the contents of my storage unit and get my hands back on my computer and start working on some videos so so this is like really crazy plan but if it's gonna work out or not it's in the stars so here we go let's do this all right, so I packed up everything that needed to be shipped. I grabbed my uh, backpack to attach GoPro camera to it and I headed out the door. I headed towards the nearest FedEx location and on my way I stopped at the Starbucks and I got a cheesecake and a coffee. I knew I was gonna have lots of walking. Once I reached uh, the FedEx location, the store was actually closed and there was this sign on the door and I didn't know what it said. I couldn't train Translated either because I was offline but thankfully this girl showed up a student and she spoke English and she translated that for me that basically that location was closed and it's not gonna open today and I need to use the other location further away and I had a lot more walking at that time I wasn't able to find a Wi-Fi hotspot so I wasn't able to get an Uber so I actually walked all the way from one FedEx location to the other. When I walked through the city again I saw this Mexican police exhibition and I had to take picture of this because I've never seen so many four-wheelers at one spot. Now I remember that actually before I left the hotel I downloaded offline Google Maps uh, because uh, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get around the city like that. As you can see, I've been walking through different parts of the city and uh, without the navigation, I'd be completely lost. So I finally located a FedEx shop and went in. And as usual, the first thing that I do, I always ask if the person I need to talk to speaks any English. So I asked the guy, habla inglés? And he said, no habla inglés. This guy spoke absolutely no English. So I was trying to explain to him that I need to ship this suit case to United States and he wouldn't understand me anything or maybe he did understand but wouldn't speak English back at me he he literally said he literally said no word in English he just spoke back at me in Spanish and I answered in English and I answered in English and this was kind of comical situation because I couldn't get through anything at that moment I didn't know what to do because my translator was offline and there was no Wi-Fi I couldn't communicate with this guy but miracle happened and this customer walked in Mexican woman walked in and she said my cousin she lives in California she speaks very good English uh, I can call her right now and she can translate over the phone so she called her cousin and that's how I was able to communicate with this uh, FedEx assistant handing the phone back and forth I've been asking questions he's been answering first he talked to her then she talked to me and that's how I learned that I can't ship leather goods from Mexico to United States for some reason. He asked me what is the contents of my suitcase and I told him I have you know nice expensive leather jacket and leather shoes and he said you know I can't ship those items. So this was kind of a bummer because these were the items that I wanted to keep the most and now I didn't know what to do with my clothes. So I just left uh, the FedEx located over there behind me. The guy didn't speak any English. I cannot ship internationally from Mexico to United States any leather clothes, which is like the main reason I'm actually shipping this suitcase. All right, I'm having the suitcase with me. I'm walking back to, uh, to my hotel. I, I would have uh, called me an Uber, but 
I don't have a fucking internet on my phone. So, so the deal is, I have a Hugo Boss leather jacket that cost me uh, roughly 300 euros. I have Italian leather shoes with me. And this was the main reason I was actually shipping that suitcase. And now, because I can't ship it, because I can't ship these leather clothing, uh, it's not really worth it for me to ship this suitcase uh, whatsoever because the value of the suitcase is the contents without the leather jacket and without the shoes the contents of the suitcase in value is less than what it would cost to ship it so what i'm ending up doing is actually throwing it all away i'm, I'm gonna throw away my jacket i'm gonna throw away the shoes my jeans my sweatpants my check driver's license and my check id card I'm gonna have to keep those with me uh, hidden somewhere in my backpack together with my passport and my uh, transfer wires uh, MasterCard and of course the memory cards as well with all these videos 400 gigabytes of raw material and the rest of it I'm gonna have to throw away including my I purchased that suitcase back in England in Reading it sucks but there's no other way to do it. All right. Okay, so slight change of plans. But I've decided instead of throwing it away, I have decided to try to see some options online. If I can maybe sell it online or in a local pawn shop. I asked the receptionist if she knows about some uh, local, local websites. They suggested local Facebook groups for uh, selling used stuff. So that's what I'm gonna try later on today. Uh, take some pictures and sell my jacket and my shoes, maybe, possibly. Maybe I'll, I'll be able to even sell that suitcase. So right now I'm heading out to that bike shop to purchase my mountain bike. All right, so I took a number of pictures of all my clothing that I would wanna sell. My jacket, shoes, all the t-shirts, sweater, jeans, everything i had i was trying to get some money for it and i posted it on number of uh, facebook marketplace pages all right one thing i did mention in the meantime i realized the internet speed is not gonna be fast enough for me to be able to upload all my files up to my iCloud storage. So what I actually also had to take care of in the meantime was to figure out how am I going to offload all my media from my computers. So I figured the best option is probably gonna be to use SD cards and I'm gonna stash them somewhere in my backpack and I'm gonna keep those with me. So what I actually did, I ordered a couple of uh, 200 and 56 gigabytes SD cards from Mexican Amazon to have them delivered overnight and hopefully I'll have enough time the next day to offload all the media. Alright so I headed out to that bike shop to finally purchase my bike. I didn't know what kind of bikes they're gonna have on stock and if there is gonna be something to choose from and I was pleasantly surprised because this was like real high-end shop carrying all the high-end bike brands and uh, as i learned from the shop guys that actually bicycling is getting really popular in mexico and there's really good market for high-end bikes all right funny thing as soon as i entered the bike shop there was the big canadian flag hanging from the ceiling i gotta take picture of this so i started shopping for my bike they had really good selection Collection of all kinds of bike brands and of course the guys been really curious who I am what I'm doing there and uh, of course I couldn't tell them I am going to <laughs> try to jump the border on my bike so I had to like really on the spot I had to come up with some kind of story I remember from the YouTube videos when I've been doing the research on desert biking this place called Copper Valley or something like that so I told them hey, yeah I'm going biking in the Copper Valley and they were like yeah yeah really so it must be good in biking and I was like yeah not not so much you know 
know, just average. All right, so we selected this bike specialized in, uh, ironically, in desert color, which is like a beige sand color. I immediately loved this bike. I would uh, probably keep it forever. And there was also the owner, and he said they're gonna treat my bike tires with some spray-in compound that's gonna protect the tubes and the tires better against puncture so it's like a self-healing spray in compound all right so i got everything i needed from that store including a flat tire repair kit two set compact pump and i chatted even more with the guys the younger guy we talked about the future and uh, what they want to do and i asked about the economic situation in mexico and how much money they can make in mexico and why is everybody leaving mexico trying to immigrate to United States. This young guy, he was really ambitious. He wanted to become a physical therapist for professional bike riders and his dream job was to actually work at one of the professional uh, road cycling teams. Very friendly people, very nice guys and the older guy especially. I am a big fan of Peter Sagan and he actually showed me a picture with the young Peter Sagan. So this was kind of unexpected. So I got all set up and I was out the store and I talked even more with this older guy. By the way, his name was Ivan and he gave me his phone number and he actually offered me to meet up at the lake that's like above Chihuahua and he invited me to go ride the bike with him on some desert mountain bike trails which was interesting I said yes and then we set up meetup time this was actually exactly what I needed to ride the bike somewhere in the desert on the sand on the rocks to see how the bike is gonna do how it's gonna handle how I'm going to cope with it test my physique as well I've never done it before I'm more of a road cycling enthusiast I've never actually done any real hardcore mountain biking so this was exactly what I needed all right oh man so my bike is here this is my brand new specialized mountain bike it cost me 16,500 pesos which is like $800 for this super mountain bike and i'm actually gonna ride it today with one of the guys from the shop at uh this lake i'm actually gonna test it today this this evening i'm also gonna try to fly the drone all right in the meantime my agent buddy just sent me uh to sign offer to purchase the white house that's what i'm gonna do right now just sign it online hopefully we can we can have it under contract soon and close on it soon so i can start working on it as soon as i get back to fayetteville there's no way back there's no way back there's only only one way and that's up north so this is Presa Erejon, very nice recreational area. I realized that my GoPro camera wasn't rolling until I was at the lake. Well, actually, it's a dam, not a lake. This is really a nice place, very well maintained. Bike lane, running lane, there's, uh, there's really nice residential area. There's a really nice and modern university, really nice place. Rock hopper. <laughs> Specialized rock hopper for jumping big rocks <laughs> because I have just tried to jump uh, big rocks, but I jumped big uh, curves around the roads and sidewalks. They have this. They have this nice lake for swimming right above Chihuahua City. This is my drone setup. I have this uh, mount, 
and the bike mount uh, holder for the Mavic 2 controller so I can actually ride the bike and operate a drone at the same time. I am going to test this today. I actually have a meeting here with one of the guys from the bike shop. Uh, he's supposed to meet me at six o'clock. I'm gonna test the active track with my uh, controller mounted on the bike. <laughs> of that so i did one flyover over the dam to conserve my batteries and now was time to finally to test the active track function on the drone so i got there a little early before the other guy shows up and i was trying to track myself while riding around the dam for some reason the active track didn't work properly it was constantly losing track of me and i had to stop frequently and reset the active track so i was pretty disappointed that this function didn't work as it was supposed to so basically i was trying to find the the limits of this function i was testing this because uh, i wanted to track myself while i'd be riding the bike from the elephant mountain through the valley away from the border patrol checkpoint in texas and also i wanted to use the drone as a lookout for possible uh, park rangers or uh, wild animals or whatever so this was a struggle i tried over and over and over again but i couldn't get it to work reliably so i was like you know fuck it i'm just gonna land the drone and wait for the other guy i was wondering if he was gonna show up or not but then he actually did really nice guy really friendly he was like can i take a selfie with you and i was like yeah okay why not i hope you're gonna send it to me and yeah he did send it to me so here it is me and ivan and we are going for a ride ivan was really knowledgeable he's been telling me lots of stuff about Chihuahua, but of course I forgot all the details but one thing I didn't forget was when he told me how they actually call these thorny bushes they actually call it the cat claw that's the only thing I remember so we rode the trail up the hill and the terrain started getting more difficult it turned out to be too difficult for me to handle and this guy he was a a beast he was 52 years old and he kicked my ass i'm telling you he was really experienced mountain biker and once we started riding the difficult terrain he just disappeared behind the horizon and i just couldn't catch up with him I couldn't pedal, I couldn't keep the balance on the bike, I had some technical difficulties also with the derailleur, so I just walk the hill up and I realize I have a freaking flat tire. So I was only 15 minutes in the ride, in the terrain, and obviously the speed spray compound that I put inside my tubes didn't work. I got a puncture basically instantly. 
So here we are trying to figure out why the tire is flat. Ivan was really willing. He grabbed my pump and started pumping the, the wheel, thinking that there is probably something wrong with the valve, but it wasn't valve. I mean, I could hear the tire leaking, so it was a puncture. So there was nothing we could do about it. I mean, I had the repair kit on me, but uh, for some reason, uh, Ivan decided to go get the car and he actually offered me to take the bike back to the shop to repair repair it but I refuse that I figure it's gonna be better if I just you know take it back to the hotel and fix it myself on my way down I actually ran into another group of bikers who also had some technical difficulties they actually asked me if I can fix broken chain but I had to tell them that you know if they don't have the missing link they won't be able to fix it I have a fucking flat tire uh, there are these spiky plants everywhere and I must have run, ran over one of them and I punctured my rear wheel so the first ride on my new bike in Chihuahua Mexico and I got a flat tire I got technical problems and I have no fucking oxygen in me because this is I know what the problem is, this is actually in pretty high elevation as well. I don't know the exact numbers, but Chihuahua is high up in the mountain, mountains and I'm not used to this elevation. And right now I don't know where to go. If we came this way, I'm lost in, in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> Luckily, I was on the right track and I was able to reunite with my guide, Ivan, who took me back to my hotel where I disassembled the tire, located the leak, and of course I realized it was one of those thorns. Then after everything was in order, I went out to the city to eat at a nice restaurant. You know, in all these restaurants in Chihuahua, there's always a live music, there's always someone singing, which was of course really nice.